So this is the Ford Cougar 2.0-litre TDCI titanium all-wheel drive power shift, which means it's the automatic on a 16 plate. I'm going to start off by showing you around the outside of the car, and then we'll hop in and run through some controls on the inside. But from the outside, you can see it's a five-door car with alloy wheels. We'll start off inside the boot and then work our way around the rest of the car from there. So as we approach the boot, you'll see that we've got reversing sensors, plenty of boot space as well. Uh, the car's also got this uh, vinyl boot liner, which was an optional extra. And then underneath this carpet section, a space saver spare wheel. Okay, so we're just going to work our way back around to the front of the car, and then we'll hop in and run through some controls on the inside. But now that we've done a full circle of it, you can see it's in excellent condition the whole way round. Just briefly before we climb in, I think as well we've seen the interior from this exterior point of view. There's plenty to run through on the dashboard, so let's hop in and we'll do that right now. So now that we're inside the car, we're going to start with the dials. On the left-hand side, we have the rev counter, and on the right-hand side, the speedometer. At the bottom in the middle, you can see the fuel gauge and cool and temperature gauges. And in that main uh, central section, first of all, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the total mass of the car, which are 34,220. Uh, on the left-hand bottom corner, it will show you what gear the car is currently in. As it's an automatic, it's showing that we're in P for park at the moment. And then we've got a digital readout for the speedometer in the center of that display. You can change the information that's displayed there by pressing buttons on the steering wheel. And you've got various different pieces of trip computer and fuel economy information eventually back round to the beginning again. If I back out to the steering wheel, the buttons I was using just a moment ago are these ones on the left. We've got stereo controls on the right hand side and voice activation for your phone. So you can hit that button, ask it to dial anyone in the contacts list of your phone and it will do that for you without you having to take your phone from your bag or pocket. Uh, that is of course once you pair the phone up, which is done on the central screen and we'll come to that in just a moment. On the bottom left just here, we've got cruise control and speed limiter. This button uh, starts and stops the engine. So with this one, it's got keyless start. You just need to make sure that the key is anywhere in the car that can be in your pocket or your bag. Hit that button to start and stop the engine. So over in the center, we have the touch screen display for the car. So firstly, with regards to pairing your phone, you hit this area here. Search for sync on your device and select sync once it is found. And then you just follow those instructions. It's very easy to do. You can go back to the home screen at any time you wish to. With regards to music in this car, there's plenty of ways to listen to it. We have AM, FM, and DAB radio, as you can see over here, a CD player, USB input, we can stream music wirelessly via Bluetooth audio. We have an SD memory card input, and we've got auxiliary input as well. So as I say, plenty of ways to listen to your music. Again, if we go back to the home screen, this car's got satellite navigation. Very easy system to use. Uh, it's a full color system, as you can see, but you can input your destination just up here. You can input address, uh, you can input your own home address in there if you wish to. Uh, previous destinations, points of interest, uh, for example, petrol stations and hotels, things like that. As I say, all very intuitive and easy to use. We're going to go back to the home screen again. And in the bottom right hand corner, you can see uh, the climate control. It will show you what temperatures we've got set for this car. The temperatures themselves are adjusted down here. If I move the gear lever out of the way, you can see that I can adjust the passenger and driver temperature, the fan speed up and down from here. I can determine where I'd like the air to be distributed. Then when I'm happy with those settings, I hit that button to turn the air conditioning off or back on again. Or I can hit auto and the car will take full control of the fan speed in order that it maintains the temperatures that I've asked for. To override that, you can just simply readjust the fans at any point in time to a level of your choosing. Uh, beneath that, we've got various buttons starting from the left hand side. That's the heated front screen heated rear screen. This one turns off the stop and start, so this car is designed to cut out when it's stationary in traffic to save you fuel. Hit that button to turn that system off. This one uh, does the autonomous parking, so this car is able to park itself. If we hit that button, you can see that it is looking for a space on the left-hand side so that it can parallel park. Uh, really great system, very easy to use, and you can look for spaces on the right-hand side as well. And then finally, this button will turn off or on the parking sensors. We then have the gear lever for the fully automatic gearbox, a 12 volt charging socket, and then inside the central armrest, we've got the SD memory card input, USB input, and auxiliary input. All that leaves me to say is thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to come and see the car for yourself and have a test drive, please feel free to give me a call. I'd love to hear from you soon.